please be warned, if you have high blood pressure, this might cause a stroke. Hello, welcome to Way of the Master Radio. I have not heard what you're about to hear. We're going to hear it together, but I can tell you what I heard earlier today. I'm sitting in my little microwave oven called an office. (sighs) They just need to put me in a little dish and spin me around. Just put me in my chair and spin me around. It would be like a bag of microwave popcorn. Could it be hotter in here? And outside, you've got hip-hop and the Brainiac working on whatever it is that they work on all day. And they were making... David, could you maybe just do it in person, some of the sounds that you were making earlier when you were editing what we're about to hear from America's Pastor? No! Ah! (laughs) Pretty much what I was hearing. So, um, where where did this come from exactly? From what, I'm, from what I understand, he was actually uh, at a conference. They borrowed him for a minute to do some online streaming uh, oh. Q&A. All righty. Here we go. So without any further ado, here then would be some online streaming Q&A with America's pastor. And I thought it was of, 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 of great interest because he was responding to the Reveal report. You need to know something about Reveal. This was the survey that was done by Bill Hybels and the church in Chicago, which basically has led thousands of churches into thinking that you need to go out and survey the community, find out what the people need, and then that's what your church should become. Well, guess what? The Reveal study revealed that nobody's digging it. And the true Christians who end up getting saved, because God saves even when there's bad teaching going on, are just leaving. So they went out and did another survey, and it revealed that what they really want is just good Bible preaching. And so now Willow Creek has said that's what they're going to do. We're still in a wait-and-see position here. Hopefully they do do some real serious Bible preaching. But America's pastor responded, and this is what he said. Have you read the Reveal study, and what is your take on the whole thing, Reveal, Willow Creek? Of course I've read the Reveal study. Uh, The biggest mistake that churches make is we think that sermons will produce spiritual maturity. David? (laughs) Thank you. They will not. Bill Hybels is one of the greatest preachers in history. They forget 95% of what they hear within 72 hours. Well, if you're forgetting 95% of everything you've heard in your lifetime, that is not going to produce spiritual maturity. Well, as long as that's what the survey says, then I guess that that's how we should do it. Besides the fact that that's what the Bible says we should be doing. What? Preaching, in season, out of teaching, always, always, always with the Word of God. Exactly the way, I don't know, can I think of an example? Um, Oh, yeah. Jesus, the way Jesus did it. Jesus had a process by which he took people from no faith in Christ to deep disciple. He, he'd, he'd command them to repent? The first public words of Jesus, what he says to his disciples, is he says, come and see. Ah, uh, did he say come and see, or did he say come and follow me? I'm the rabbi, you're the disciple, you will now change your life to follow me. Not come and see, come and check it out. Come and follow me. Do what you're told. Not come and, hey, give it a little look, see thief. See if you're interested in trampsing around Galilee for a while. Now, that's the entry point for faith. No, it's not. No, it's not. You either get saved or you don't. You either get converted by God himself or you don't. You don't just sort of go from a 1 to 10 and then, bing, you get to 10. Boom, you get saved. And until you get saved, you're unregenerate and you're a sinner and you're in danger of a hardened heart and of drifting away from the dock of truth, from the mooring of salvation. Come and see. What's the commitment level of come and see? Nothing. Just show up. Oh, all righty. So if you just come and show up, that's the entry point into faith? Sit in the back, don't sing anything, say anything, sacrifice anything. Jesus never left them there. And- okay, uh, 1 Corinthians, uh, order in the church. Is it 11? Let, let there be clear, orderly preaching, teaching, so that if somebody comes in, they fall under conviction, fall to their face, and confess God. What is What is this? And from come and see... He took them through consistent steps, and all through the three and a half years of ministry, he's turning up the heat. And as they begin to follow him, he starts saying, now, you're my disciple if, and he redefines commitment, you're my disciple if you love one another. Right before the cross, 
He turns around to him and he says, if you want to follow me, you've got to take up your cross, deny yourself, and follow me. Now, would you agree that there's a huge difference in commitment between come and see and come and die? Uh, no, first of all, it's not come and see, so there's our problem. It's come and follow me, which is exactly the same as come and die. Same thing. This is what happens when you use a loosey-goosey translation. Hold on. There's more. We can't give pat answers anymore. People say, well, if you just pray and love people and preach the word, your church will grow. You mean like the Bible says? That's just not true. You mean like Titus says? Somebody needs to stand up. I know a lot of guys who pray more than I do and the church is dying. It takes more than prayer to grow a church. Ecclesiastes 10.10 10 says, If the axe is dull and its edge is unsharpened, more strength is needed. But skill will give success. Skill. It doesn't say dedication will give success. It doesn't say sincerity will give success. It doesn't say preaching the word and loving people will give success. It says skill. Oh, wow. Context, context, context. Church growth, which, by the way, isn't a biblical topic, is, I don't think, what was in view there in Ecclesiastes 10.10. Even so, prayer and preaching doesn't grow a church? Whoa, that's... You know, if you go out fishing, sometimes in the middle of the day you have to change bait. Because what the fish were biting on in the morning, they're not biting on in the afternoon or evening. And what we're doing in a lot of churches, we're using baits and hooks from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, and it's the 21st century. Yeah, and they shouldn't have been using bait back then either. They should have been preaching the gospel back then. The whole concept is flawed. Boy, that's presuppositional argument. That's, well, we do seeker-sensitive methods. We need new seeker-sensitive methods. Hold on a second. You haven't made the case for seeker-sensitive methods. And to not preach the Word of God from a pulpit because that doesn't grow people? Whoa. Whoa. The best way to waste your pulpit is to uh, preach your own thoughts instead of preaching God's thoughts. I think pastors are fascinated by trends and fascinated by what the latest sociologists and latest psychologists and latest advertising scheme and latest computer and latest media are saying and, and they think that'll be interesting, that'll be interesting. It, it is interesting, but it's what people can find out anywhere. What people won't find out anywhere else except in the pulpit is what does God have to say? God will you Bring God to bear, bring God's word to bear on every problem, whether it's what the media are saying or sociologists are saying or psychologists are saying, being radically Bible saturated, not just Bible based, like I'm going to stand on the Bible and talk about other things, but being saturated with the Bible, explaining the Bible. The Bible really is not only wonderfully insightful, it is interesting. It's radically interesting. It blows your mind. If you take every sentence seriously and dig deep into the Bible, you'll find things that will simply boggle your mind, interest your people, change their lives, knock their ideas cuckoo. It's amazing what the Bible is. And I, I don't know why pastors many of them anyway, seem to find the Bible boring or unhelpful or they just want to go there a little bit and then go somewhere else to interest the people. It just, why would you do that? You know, I hate to interrupt that, but I just can't help myself. Is not John Piper a counterpoint 